Hello everyone, I am the Shinigami. And I am the Quincy, and welcome back to Eurotaku, your number one source for manga and anime. On YouTube. <laughs> and today, we are reviewing um, Bleach Chapter 544. Walking with the Watchers. So, do you want to get the key points for this chapter? I would love to. Key points of this chapter. Nice and simple. We have Uryu and Bok talking, and then we're taken to Bambita, and then we're introduced to some new Quincy's. And then, and then we're taken to Hodgepodge's room, which is a very short key point, and then the last part, which is pretty much the return to Hueco Mundo. So, very nice, very nice and quick key points. Um, it was a very nice chapter overall. So, um, I liked the first key point, the key point, where we got to see Uryu talking with Juhabak. Um, I liked it because Kubo didn't skip it over this this week. I thought, you know, oh, Kubo's gonna go somewhere else, but he's doing a lot of stuff that's un Kubo like of him, which I like. <laughs> so, um, I like this. Uryu talking with Bach, because we find out a little bit more about what was going on last week. We don't find out exactly what he was drinking, although I'm pretty sure we already know. But yeah, I just liked it because it was an information gainer. And we actually saw the reason behind um, Bach naming Uryu his successor. So it was good. Um, I enjoyed this key point as well. Like you said, it's very un -Kubo like It's more Oda-like, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, and, yeah, we got to find out the reason why Udi was named the successor. And the reason being was when Juhabak did the technique that killed all the uh, half-blood Quincy's, like Udi's mother, Udi lived. And according to Juha Bach, that uh, he stated that Uryu had something that that can make Uryu surpass himself. So it's nice to see Kubo giving Uryu the attention that he he you know so long deserved in, in the series. He's getting a power up. We can see that happening already. He's going to get a power up. Uh, and but yeah, I mean, it was a it was a really good part, and I really didn't expect Kubo to continue with the Quincy stuff. Like you know, like I said, I figured he'd go back to the you know the Soul Palace or something. But no, we're with the Quincys again. So you know, thank you, Kubo. Um, another thing, um, the part about Uryu surviving, I think that, that has to do with him being Ryukin's son. Because if Ryukin is as strong as everyone predicts him to be, then a lot of his power must have carried on to Uryu. He just has, he just doesn't know it yet. I know the whole thing about if you're a mixed blood, you're not as strong as a pure blood. Maybe, maybe Ryukin's blood, like, it did something different to Uryu that it didn't, it didn't degrade his power or it didn't downgrade the power Ryukin passed on to his son. You know what I'm saying, guys? Uryu just has to unlock that power and he'll be strong. would be Bambita and the new Quincy's. Should I go first? Well, we're, we're taking the to Bambita and she's pretty much demanding a foot soldier to go to her room because she wants to quote unquote do it. 
Um, the foot soldier seems very pleased about this. And then the very next panel, we see him being split in half. So, you know, at first I was like, is Ben Pizza a slut? Do we finally have like our first official slut of Bleach? No, I think she, I think she was more using her sex appeal to draw in the, draw in the man and then kill him. Kind of like a Black Widow. If you want to call it like that, but without having sex or intercourse or giving birth to like thousands of babies, nothing like that. But she drew him in and then she killed him. And to me, it seems like her, she's able to form like Reishi discs and she's able to like launch him to cut people in half. Kind of like Krillin, you know, from Dragon Ball Z. His destructible disc, kind of like that. The same, kind of like the same thing, you know, because now it was a clean cut. It, it, I know we saw her use a sword, but it feels like she has some, like, something more than a, just a sword. I feel like, you know, a, like a disc or something would probably be her Quincy power. But yeah, you know, it, it was nice, I guess. It, it wasn't as nice as, you know, the Udi stuff, but it, it was still, you know, it was still a good part of the chapter. Um, then we get to introduce some new Quincy's. I don't remember their names. You, I know you have their names, but two of the Quincy's, um, they, they look kind of familiar. I mean, one Quincy looks like Odahime, the other Quincy looks like Rangiku. I know it's Kubo recycling faces, but come on. The hair and the postures are the same. Like, the one that looks like Rangiku is, is a bent over with her hand on her, on her, on her knee, I think. And the one that looks like Orihime is standing straight up. Like how she stands when each goes around, so. Again, it was nice that we're seeing new Quincy's. Yeah, I'm done with that. Um, I like this part. Like at first, whenever I first saw Bambietta, I didn't really like her. Um, for a few reasons, but I thought she was going to turn out to be like a Yachiru or Hiori type character. You know, the young girl who um comes in and she beats everybody up, and nobody suspects it. That's not what I didn't like about her. I just didn't like her character in her way. But she looked, basically she looked really childish back then. But then we see her in this chapter, and then she has that quote-unquote, let's do it thing. Which I thought was both funny and interesting, that Kubo would do that. But um, oh, we also keep in mind that I don't think she did anything with that guy. I think she just walked into the room, unbuttoned her shirt a little bit, got him to come closer, then killed him. But considering it's a shonen manga, you can't show that much. So for all we know, that could be the afterwards. But, you know, who knows? We'll never know. But, um, it shows that she pretty much doesn't care, and you had pretty much the perfect phrasing for it. She's like a black widow. She lures them in and then kills them. She's like an evil seductress. Um, and something about her, just, she just looked more womanly this chapter. Instead of like a, a girl, she looked more like a young woman. Um, but now I'm starting to fanboy over her. And am I the only one who noticed her bust? She went from looking like almost flat chested to now she looks like she has double D's. Sorry, this is my pervertedness coming out. The Shinigami is more perverted. Anyway. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So she cuts that male guy in half, and then we see the four other Ven Riker Storm Raider members. We see uh, Meninus McAllen, who is a P Stern Raider, Stern Raider P. She's the one who looks like Orihime. We see Lil Toto Lampard, Stern Raider G. She looks like she's probably uh, 10 years older, maybe even younger. But she's evil. She just, she calls Bambietta a bitch right away. We see Stern Raider Z, uh, Giselle Duell. 
who kind of looks like um, a younger version of that one Division Zero member. She kind of looks like a younger version of her. And we see Stern Ritter T, Candace Catnip, who looks like, um, kind of looks like Ron Giku. But they all have the same mannerisms and everything. So I like, um, I know a lot of people complain about uh, Universe having way too many characters. But I really like, I like characters, I just like seeing new faces. So I'm glad Kuba is introducing us to quite a few new faces. So I like this part. Um, one thing to add to the Ben Beats part you said about her being like childish in a way, you know. If you go back to the Purge of Soul Society, when she was fighting a Komamaru, she called him a doggy. Children call dogs doggy, and in you know this chapter she was sadistic pretty much so maybe she has like a split personality <laughs> maybe she's bipolar maybe she's bipolar <laughs> who knows uh, and then there's only one final key point isn't there oh wait no no oh, there's the uh, Oswald and then the the yeah, that's right. So, I'll go first on the Hoshwald part. So we see Hoshwald returning to his room, and in there is this woman with creepy black eyes. At first I thought it was just how close the lines were together, but then she had like wide eyes and they were just pure black, so I don't know what's going on with her. But they were just discussing recent events, you know, with Uryu and Juhabak and what Hoshwald thought. Okay, so as I was saying, um, Hoshwald was talking to this girl about the recent events. She asked him if he was upset, and he said not really. He just recognized that Juhabak was trying to get discord among his men so that they'd be focused on Uryu and a few other things I don't really remember fully. But it, this shows... Um, character development in Hoshwald. We learn more about him. We learn that he's very smart, very intuitive. Uh, he can see through things pretty easily. He's And he's pretty level-headed. He's kind of... So yeah, that's all about what I think of that part. So what do you think, Quincy? Well, it was a very uh, you know, short part. Interesting. Um, Interesting to the chapter. Me personally, I didn't like it that much. But you know, we got we got to know more about Hoswell's character, uh, Mr. Calm Guy. Pretty much yeah. goes along with anything Ju Hobog says. So yeah, not really much this that part. Okay. And the final part, where we go back to Huekumuno. Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Uh, I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Well, we're taken back to Michael Bruno, finally. And we see Orihime. She's standing at the bottom of the, of the stair, of the, of the staircase. Of, like, a staircase. And then we see, like, this little black bird thing that Kisuke gave them. And it has, like, a recorder on it, a video on it, and uh, TSK said if they're in trouble, they'll go there immediately. Um, Orihime then begins to talk about Sato and this potato-like thing that they're eating. And the Shinigami pointed this out, but that is a Shingeki no Kyojin reference. A very small one, but it's a reference. Um, and then behind Orihime on the top of the staircase, we see Sato, and Sato says, Orihime, you're late. And then she turns around, Sato says, everyone's here. And behind Sato, we can I, we can assume that that's Grim Jaws Lake. And by everyone, I think the remaining is Aspada and the remaining Arankar. 
have gathered together. I believe that they just rescued Hattie Bo. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I like this part. And then of course, the last couple of battles we see Kisuke working on the Quincy Pennant. And we can see like the pennant's almost faded out. Like the cross that was there is like no more. Uh, I like this part because, you know, the Shingeki you no know, Kyojin reference. And that we finally got to see other people again. You know, we get to see Chad and Orihime and Urahara and who we can assume is probably Grim Jong. But yeah, like the Quincy said, um, the way uh, Sado said everyone is here. You don't say everyone's here if it's just you and some other guy. I mean, whenever I think of everyone, I think of a group of people. And a group of people is usually, you know, between three to six to lots of people. So we're going to be getting quite a few people. Just because we saw one leg doesn't mean there aren't other legs behind them. So it gives me hope, and I'm really excited for the following week's chapters. Anything else for that part? Um, just want to add a little prediction okay. to the end of this. Um, if you know Saddle's a full ringer and his powers are hollow based, so. What if Grimjaw ends up training Sato, and Sato oh, like fully masters his Wolverine, and you know giving Sato a power boost, which he needs, mm -hmm. because Sato needs a good fight, and he's going to get one in in his war. Yeah, I want to see a full uh, a full body Wolverine from Sato. Mm -hmm. exactly what I thought. That's just my thoughts. Yeah. So should we move on to the basic fat? Yes. Okay. Badassness for this chapter, what'd you think? Five. Yeah, about a four or five. Attention level, how much attention were you paying? A nine. I'd have to say about an eight or a nine, because it was very enthralled by this. Uh, satisfactory. How satisfying was the chapter? About an eight. Yeah, I'd have to say about seven or eight. Uh, interesting. How interesting was the chapter? About a six or seven. Yeah, I'd have to say about a six and a half. Uh, comedy. How comedic was the chapter? About a two. Yeah. I have to say about three because I laughed at that part where that little girl just came out and said bitch. It just was funny to me in a way. And uh, fan service? Uh, about a six. The, pretty much the Bambi eats and stuff. Yeah. And the new Quincy's. Yeah. I'd have to say about a five. Animation, how well drawn was the chapter? It could have been drawn better, but the characters were really well drawn. Yeah. About a seven and a half. Yeah. Yeah, Kubo primarily focuses on the character more than so than the background, so I, I completely agree and I'd have to say about a seven. And predictability, how predictable is this chapter? I'm going to say about a two and a half. Okay. I'd have to say about a three or four, because we did kind of think of that it would go back to you, but generally we didn't get what all was going to happen, so about a three probably. And chapter rating out of five stars? Uh, three point seven. I'd have to rate it about a, yeah, probably about a three point seven. Anything else to add? Um, yes, one thing. In our prediction video, we did ask, we did ask each other which one we thought we were gonna, was going to have the better chapters. So 
I know the three chapters of Fairy Tale haven't been out yet, but we can already assume those are gonna be really bad chapters. And Bleach had the best chapter this week. It doesn't matter what Fairy Tale throws out. Bleach had the best chapter this week. Yeah. Which is surprising because we predicted Naruto and One Piece. But, I mean, just with what all we learned. Anything else? Um, I don't believe so. Okay. Well, links are in the description. Be sure to check out our other videos. And I am the Shinigami. And I am the Quincy. And I'm signing off. Adios, Otakus. Jonah.